removing people from photos that you don't want them to be there, cropping the image to make it exactly how you want it to focus to make it more artistic, improving the dynamics of the colour and cutting people out from the background so you can play around with contrast and effects, and finally resampling the image to give it the resolution that you need. These are fundamental skills for taking images from your phone or your camera and making them worthy of putting in magazines. So I'm going to cover all of these um, skills really quickly. If you look in the description below, you'll see links to where in the video I do this. So if there's one skill that you're looking after rather than all of them, just go down and click to where you need to get to. So I'm going to start off with the first one, which is the most exciting and my favorite, which is removing objects from photos that you don't want to be there. So here we have a photo of a man and woman on the beach, and this is pretty normal. You can take this photo anywhere, but let's make it a bit more fashion orientated, which is just her on her own. So how do you do this? There's a few ways of doing this, but the simplest and the fastest is this tool right here. It's called the Spot Healing Tool. So you go ahead and select it, and you select a size which is going to be you know, about so big on the guy's face. Now there's quite a few different ways you can do this. Um, there's content wear, texture wear, proximity match, and if you're doing this for your coursework or project, you should play around with all of them to find out which one works best for you. But I'm gonna say content to wear and mode normal. What you do is you take your cursor over the guy's face and you start drawing an outline. Now you don't need to be particularly precise. You can go over, it's completely fine, but you really don't want to be going over too much. So try and keep it nice and close to the body. Uh, you can see that I'm going over a little bit. That's completely fine. So we just trace over him, and then we just fill the inside all the time. I've got my mouse pressed down, my left mouse button. I'm just filling. And just to prove it, I've made a big mistake there. I've gone right over. It doesn't matter, it's fine. So I release my mouse, and bang, he's gone. You would never know he's there. Photoshop is excellent at this. Let's go forward and do some more. There's people in the background. I'm just gonna zoom in just there and exactly the same. Take my cursor and just go over them in the water and let go. Now, if you look here, then where the people were, there's a little bit of what I'd call ghosting. All you do is drag over that and draw a line over the boundaries, and this will merge it all nicely in with the background. If you find a bit of rough stuff, it's okay. Just kind of play with it until it looks right. And a little bit around there. Zoom out, and there you are. We've got rid of the man and the people in the background. Ah, there's a watermark at the bottom. Now this image is Creative Commons. I'm gonna put a link to the actual image with full referencing at the very bottom to prove I'm not doing anything wrong, but I'm gonna go ahead and move the copyright exactly the same way. Now, if there's anything else I can see here, which I like, there's a bit of a black dot there. Now it's gone. So you can really go through and remove anything to make it look perfect. This image is now much better for using in your magazine. So now on to skill number two, recomposition to make it uh, more uh, artistic. Now this image, as it turns out, is pretty good. You don't need to do very much, but I'm gonna show you anyway, and you can take this and apply it to your own work and see what you can create. So there's a rule of thirds, so, which is if you have um, your image broken into thirds, and the vertical and horizontal, it looks more appealing to the eye. So go along to the side, get your crop tool, and if you just take the edges, you'll see that this grid appears. If the grid doesn't appear, just drop down from the side there, and you can see different um, rules. So the rule of thirds is one of the options. Your grid, diagonals, golden spiral is another fantastic one. So any of these work well. The golden ratio is very good, but I'm, I'm gonna use rule of thirds. Again, it's not a hard rule. You don't have to apply it directly, but a good way to use it is play around, which is if you try it one way, see how it looks, then undo it, try it a different way, see how that looks. In the end, try and choose the grid composition that works best for your eye and what you're trying to achieve. Anyway, I'm gonna take this down and you see that I'm keeping her just to the right of one of the areas and I'm squeezing it down there. So you see that roughly the bottom third 
is sand, the top two thirds her. So that's not too bad. Let's then try let's try the golden ratio. Alright, if I was to bring this up a bit there, now I can see I've got the C filling in very nicely in that middle one. So I'm just gonna let's have a look, take it in and drop it like that. Now this is one example of how you can use it. Um, you don't have to use it, it depends on what you're trying to achieve. So when you look at the picture, does this give you the right image and feel for what you wanted? Anyhow, I'm going to say yes it does and click OK and assume that this is good and I'm going to carry on. Obviously lots of C in here. So we're going to go on to the next tool which is improving the dynamics. So how to do that? Go to Image, Adjustment and Levels. So there's a lot of ways you can do this in your um, images Photoshop. This is just one way you can do it. So if you're getting images off things like Flickr, they might have been processed already, so you might you can skip this. But if they're from your camera as an automatic, you're going to get this. So on the levels here, you'll see that there's this histogram where it ramps up slowly and then down again. So normally you want to kind of squash the tails. So let's take the shadows and move it just long to the point where it starts to hit the curve going off. So you get from the bottom tail. And the highlights, we can just move them to the left so it starts to hit um, starts to hit the curve going up. Now the curve going up has already been hit, but you see I move to the left, it starts saturating and becomes really bright. I don't want to lose, I don't want to sort of oversaturate it, but I want to give it a bit more dynamic. So my highlights are becoming brighter and more vivid, my shadows are getting darker. I think that's about right. So I can turn the preview off. That's how before. This is after. So it really just boosted the image. So this makes it pop out quite a bit. Now, we've done our levels. We've got to think about the next thing. I maybe I want to do something really fun with the background, like put a colour there, put a crop, put some effects. I want her to stand out more. So let's see how we do this. Well, Firstly, you've got to remove her from the background so that you can play around with the background without it interfering with her. How do you do that? Again, there's lots of ways you can do it, but I'm going to show you a really quick, easy way. Let's take the image and just duplicate it by dragging it over to the new page area. So we've got two copies of the image. I'm now going to zoom in and center on her. That's about right. Maybe out a little bit. Now I'm on a Mac here so I'm using my trackpad but you can use control and minus to zoom in manually. On the tools I'm going to use magnetic lasso. Actually no, I'll use an easier one, make it simpler for you. I'm going to use the quick selection tool. Quick selection tool, it's a very rough and ready way of working but it works very well. So you've got some options at the top here, drop down the size, and I'm going to select yeah, about that. So what I do is I then just drag it over our model and you see that as it drags, it goes, yep, you're in contrast with the background. So we're working out roughly where you are. Now it's not perfect, so I'm gonna zoom in here and you see, ah, we've got part of our leg is missing. So I'm going to take my tool, make it a bit smaller. Let's go down and type in five pixels. So it's quite a small one. Then I select the minus option, and you see I can just go away. And I can add, take bits off. I can add bits in. I don't need to be overly precise with this, but you can go very precise if you really want to. This is more kind of refinement. Now, if you look at the hair, it's difficult in this way to get perfect hair. You know, we can increase the hardness, decrease the spacing, make this a smaller size. If you press Alt, it um, turns back on to removing. If you want to do more of this, the best thing to do is look on YouTube for additional um, tutorials. You know, By using one pixel, you can see I'm really dragging it over the pixel level so you can get it quite refined. I'm going to just go a little bit more. I 
Let's grab this little bit of hair there. I'm going to loosen this trans. Actually, you know what? Alt to minus key it. I'm going to lose that bit of hair there. So, for my purposes, I think this is going to be good enough for what I want to do. Right, so, I'm missing some leg there. Don't want to miss a leg. And it's a part of a foot. Yep, it's going over. That is close enough for me. So, as I said before, this is a very quick and dirty way to do it. it makes life easy. So your head too. Now, every time I think I'm finished, I always find a little bit. So, lesson there. Spend a bit of time checking all parts of your picture to make sure you've got everything you want. Right, that's good for me. So, all I could do is go here to my mask tool and click once. Now, nothing's changed, can't see anything change, but if I now hide the background, you'll see that she is on her own. And what this means is, if I now duplicate the background again, and I want to do something to, let's say the background, I want to make want to make that darker. So this is where you get into a whole world of techniques. Um, there's many ways to do this, but my favorite is I'm going to image, adjustments, and desaturate. So I've removed all the color from that background image, drop down on these effect styles, and I'm going to say overlay. Hmm. Is that the best one? Darken. Let's say overlay. Right. Take the opacity and drop that down. So I've now made the background a bit more brooding. So you see that's with my effects, that's without. But maybe you want to do something different. Um, how about I add a new layer and image adjustments, sorry, edit fill. I can do a color. Hey, let's go for pink just because it's a color. And then we drop this down as an overlay. We've got a pink background. Um, that's probably not something that you're really going to want to go for a lot, um, unless it's part of your theme. Um, but yeah, so if you want to play with the background, you can. But on a serious note, one way which I'd find it more useful is making her pop from the background more, which is using the sharpening tool. So selecting the layer, which she's on, we can go to filter, sharpen, and then let's go to sharpen more. And she's really kind of gone very hard today. You see it's really popped. I'll just undo that and you know, redo, select, sorry, sharpen, sharpen more. So she really goes very hard. So sharpen more is too much, but I can go sharpen, sharpen edges. That's kind of just made a come from the background more. It may stand out more, uh, especially if we want to, let's say, duplicate the background and we want to add a, let's say, a Gaussian blur to the background to make it very dreamlike. So you can see they've really altered the background there. You can play around with this lots of different effects, but it really depends on what you're trying to get. Anyway, that's cutting out of the background. And if you really want, you can even take her, oops, take her top layer and she can walk next to herself or beside herself. But we're gonna keep it like that. So the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna upscale the image. Now this is quite an easy thing to do. We go to image, image size, and you're going to play at the resolution. Now I will, it's already at 300 pixels per inch, which is very good, but I want it to be Hey, let's choose something uh, in centimeters. It's 7.29 um, centimeters wide. I want to make this, I don't know, 20 centimeters wide. You see, automatically the height's adjusted to go with it, and it's kept the um, resolution. Let's zoom out so you can see it properly. Now, this drop down menu here is very important. This is where you can choose what kind of algorithm is used when playing with the image, because this is adding pixels in. So how does it choose to add? Well, it helps you up here, because you've got two kinds for enlargement. One says preserving detail, one says bicubic smoother. Now the short answer to which one you choose is, if you've got a 
illustration where you need to have the detail preserved, so a technical drawing, then this one, the preserved detail is best. For a photograph, like this one here, then smoother is better. So I uh, have this resample, click OK. I see that's really got larger, and we can now save this. So that's going to be working at the size we want it to appear in the magazine at the right resolution, rather than stretching it and pulling it into lots of different um, distortions. So those are the essentials for photo editing. Done it really, really smooth, um, so really, really fast crash course. So we've removed unwanted objects. We've recomposed the image to give it um, a rule of thirds applicability. We have done dynamic levels. We have cut off about the background, done a very, very few simple adjustments to make it sort of, you know, the way that we want, and we've upscaled the images. If you do this to all your images in magazines and coursework, you generally won't go too wrong. So I hope this has been useful. Any questions or comments below or reply to you with a video on tutorial, and I really hope you do great with this. Enjoy using Photoshop.